Hi, I'm Joanna Van Thine, and you're watching the 13th Wolfman. Ow! Hey, everybody, it's the 13th Wolfman. You know what? You know who I have back with me? I have Joe Pincushion, formerly Joe Pincushion. Now she is Joanna Van Thine. Welcome back to Sit Down, Joe. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I, I love this. I, I mean, you went, you stated last year, you went through metamorphosis and you came out the other end, you know, as a, as yourself, basically. Yeah, more true to myself. Um, Van Thine is my last name. It is uh, Belgian descent. It's Dutch. Uh, but people think that this is my fake name, which is funny. <laughs> I love that. I, it, I mean, honestly, if you could make up any name in the world, would you really make up Van Thine? No, you can't. I mean, because people don't really know how to spell it. So, like, get alone, make it up. It, it Looking at the way it's spelled, it does look like a bunch of consonants thrown together. Yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> I was just born with this name. I was told how to use it. It's uh, I, I know that it should be T-H-I-N-E to make it uh, easier, but that's not the way we roll in the Van Thine family. Yeah, it's like T-H-U-Y... N-E, yeah. It's... N-E. Okay. I had a lot of I had a lot of trouble in school people pronouncing my name. It was that which is part of the reason why I went by Joe Pincushion because uh, having to correct people and tell people how to say my name was. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel your pain, sister, because I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's like I mean I go by the Thirteenth Wolf Man just just because. Uh, well, when I first started the channel, that's what it was, and and uh, I do this. Uh, the 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 13th wolfman is is a is an a, is an alias because i have a brother and he doesn't know i do this so i'm trying to keep that name out of you know yeah and, yeah um, i understand that that's how i mean my family wanted me to be uh so i use a different name so i wouldn't associate with them but um yeah oh well. so whenever when i refer to my brother I, I i kept the whole monster thing in there you know i have mama wolf mm -hmm. my mother and my brother's a redheaded monster. Oh, redheaded which, monster. Which, which doesn't mean he was a monster growing up. It's just that he was, uh, you know, he, he was the one of the two of us that had red hair. And, you know, I just kind of kept the monster theme in there, you know. Yeah, that's so. good. You got to keep monster themes in everything. It's yeah. my motto in life. So you, I mean, we're not going to talk about something else, but uh, <laughs> we're not. I, I, I you, you were, you you've been associated with a project that you're no longer so that you don't consider yourself to be associated with. And that's as much we're going to say about that. I really just have no idea what the fuck's going on there. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's fine. <laughs> but since then, since your metaphor morphosis into Joanna Van Thine, you've now got a podcast. Yeah. I've uh, been, you know, moved from Philadelphia to New York, started taking classes at the Upright Citizens Brigade and learning a lot about myself, about comedy and how to present yourself to your audience. And obviously with the changing world around us, everybody has anxiety. So I've decided to launch this podcast called Apocalypse Now, which uh, questions, oh yeah, it questions whether or not the end of the world is actually happening. And I, I really have these, uh, questions for myself. I have this anxiety. I'm, I'm sure if you wake up in the morning, sometimes you read something on the news and you think, oh, maybe the apocalypse will be tomorrow. Uh, and I'm trying to have conversations about the changing world in a funny way with some really cool people. Now, I'll be honest. When you were talking about this on Wicked Horror Show, I would love to do one of your shows. Okay. Yeah, we definitely do it. I, I, I really would. I, I would love to, I mean, because... You, you you were saying that, you know, on that, on that, you know, you talk to your friends and a lot of you have the same, you know, the, the same uh, thoughts. Oh, I'm a little bit older than you. That's, okay. You know, and yeah. so I, I have a different, different generation way of thinking, you know. Yeah. And I'd love to talk to people that have a, a different viewpoint um, as to how I see things because I'm a senior millennial, but. Uh, I'm a Gen Xer. Yeah. The Gen X. At least you're not a baby boomer. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my father is a proud baby boomer. Uh, but there's nothing, not, not bad mouthing any generation. Uh, and I actually hate the fact that everybody's categorized in different ways. But it is important to talk to people that have more life experience. 
and I hope to influence younger people to do the same. And so you're, like you said, you're you're in New York. You're taking classes from the Upright Citizens Brigade, which I honestly didn't. I I, I knew of them as a group. I didn't realize that there was uh, places where you could take classes from them or anything. I just yeah, there are a lot of really great people that have come out of the UCB training program. Uh, Jason Manzukis, uh, Aubrey Plaza is a UCB grad, uh, and I read Amy Poehler's book, uh, Yes, Please, and it really influenced me to leave Philadelphia and to go to New York and take these classes because if the best of the best are getting inspired at this place, then uh, that's where I needed to be because I really love creating. I love being on set and I want to make it um, my life's mission and I can't do that without a good education. Right. I, I mean, I, I honestly, I thought of the, the UBC. Uh, UC. UCB. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I knew I said it wrong. I mean, I, I, I thought of them as more of like uh, the Groundlings or Second City or something like that, where I didn't think that you just, I, I just thought, you know, something you went out, you you tried out for, and if you made it, you made it, and that was it, you know? I didn't realize uh, it was more You have to, to actually go through the core curriculum, which is Improv 101 through Improv 401. I'm actually just starting Improv 401. So once you're done uh, going through the core curriculum, you can audition for the house teams, which I hope to do. Uh, and, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm really uh, just rolling with the punches at this point. Yeah, you've got one of the best sets of humors out there. I mean, okay. if you ask me, so you're, you're definitely going to go far. Oh, thanks. I mean, it's a lot of hard work and I got a lot of passions and I'm ready to, I'm ready to like hit the ground running really. Um, yeah, we, we've had you on, I mean, I've had you on sit down a few times and we've had you on, uh, the, the different shows over on the Dorkening, you know, Wicked Horror and the Sunday show and all that. And it's, I've never heard you really say anything bad about anything. It's like, it's like, yeah, that, that there's there's bad things happening in the world, and that they're, they're a little fearful and a little frightening. But you've always had a really great attitude. Have I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like I have to have a good attitude. Um, when I was young, I I've gone through a lot, a lot of uh, a trauma, both emotionally and physically, and you have to. I've learned at a very young age that you have to just keep going, and you have to. To try to stay positive and that's especially important now with the changing like not only things that are happening in our government but things that are happening around the world with school shootings and uh attacks all over the place you, we have to try to find some positive aspects of life and we have to cling on to them uh yeah, and go really. forward because if we don't do that then what's going to happen to our country yeah, and but you got to remember. I mean, the one thing that I mean, the one thing you got to remember about our country is, even though we're probably one of the best countries in the world, and we have all the we have the equal rights and you know the Bill of Rights and all, we have the right to speak our mind no matter what. Mm -hmm. We're still the one of the youngest countries in the world. Yeah, this is our ultimate test. This, this, this is our this is our puberty basically. Mm -hmm. I mean. You got countries like England and Rome and Belgium that have been around forever. They've they've already gone through this, so they're they're at that point where they're looking down and they're going, eh, you know, you guys have been, you, yeah, you had that rebellion, you know, back in the 1700s, and you've dealt with this, but you're still young, and that's something you got. We're still we're still we're still puppies. We're a puppy country. Yeah. I see. I feel like we're going through a midlife crisis right now instead of an adolescent crisis well when you look at who's in charge i say adolescent <laughs> you know that's true i mean i mean and i never only... thought of that that before that other people ha other countries have gone through this because it's true other countries have gone through the you know italy germany yeah. france ha has gone through this populist movement which i never thought that the united states would hire uh, hire elect someone based on like populist viewpoints um uh that yeah that really kind of makes me feel a little bit better knowing that other countries have gone through this no yeah i mean it the 
rise and fall of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that we are the Roman Empire right now. Yeah. That's the other thing that uh, with my podcast, we ask, like, what does the apocalypse mean? Does it mean the planet's going to blow up? Does it mean the fall of society, the fall of your government? Uh, There's lots of different things that can bring on the end of something and the beginning of something new. And I, I honestly, I mean, if anything, I honestly believe no matter what we're going through right now, we're going to come out of the other, I'm using this term again, but we're going to come out the other end a better country, no matter yeah. what happens. I, I hope so. I hope it unites us more because we were very divided there before. We've been divided for a long time. And I hope this trauma is w- making us all wake up to be like, oh, we actually have to listen to our neighbors and try to help one another instead of arguing and fighting all the time. So along with doing the podcast, you're also writing. Yes. I, uh, I'm writing a web series called Meza Morta, which is a, uh, it's a five episode web series that takes place in uh, a basement lab where two Russian scientists have created a YouTube personality uh, consisting of other YouTube personalities literally sewn together. So she's a hodgepodge of YouTube tropes. So um, it's it, it's Frankenstein meets, you know, YouTube, Frankenstein, I guess. Yeah, Frankenstein meets YouTube meets uh, Young Frankenstein meets Dr. Horrible. It's not a musical, but uh, right. it's, it's influenced by a lot of those different aspects. There's lots of gore in it. It's really funny. Um, I make fun of the things that are going viral right now. I make fun of the political commentators on both ends because that's the only thing that I really see online anymore. And uh, it also addresses the way that we uh, absorb our information and the way that we treat each other and the chaos that is happening uh, between Russia and the United States because the two scientists are, are, have a stereotypical Russian accent. That's, that's right. I've always found the Russian accent, I mean, no matter, very cool sounding. It's a good villain accent. Like, you can't, you, know? you can't be intimidated by someone with, like, a really nice French accent. Yeah, exactly, you know. I mean, but when, but when you hear, like, uh, well, no matter what, I mean, for me, it's women, but when you hear Russian women speak, it's very sexy sounding. I was going to say Glow, uh, the one character that the, the Russian uh, villain. Right. She's very, very good. She's, she speaks in broken English, and it's uh, uh, it's very funny. I like it um, to take like the old stereotypical tropes that they used to use back in the day and uh, bring them back. I'm very influenced by Mel Brooks, and when all of this stuff with Donald Trump started happening, I just thought, what would Mel do? He'd make fun of <laughs> he'd make fun of Hitler. Uh, <laughs> But it's funny, Mel Brooks actually says, I actually waited for Hitler to die before I started making fun of him. So, <laughs> and he's saying that everybody's doing it. But uh, that was a, a main push, was just, say hey, Mel Brooks would make fun of Hitler, so I guess I got to make fun of Donald Trump sometimes. Yeah. The sad thing is that everybody's doing it. Yeah, it's not really not hard to do because he is a giant clown in itself. I, I... I get that, but I mean, it's like, at the end of the day, you know, you, you hear about it. I mean, you could turn the TV on in the morning and you hear like everyone like rip on him, and then at the end of the night, you're hearing like Colbert and all the other people rip. I'm like, really? This is it? This is this is what uh, programming has turned to? It's like, hey, let's just rip on the president for like the next twelve hours. Well, I mean. That's the way it was when Bush was in office, I feel. Everybody was equally making fun of Bush, too. Yeah, but for good reasons. He couldn't <laughs> well, say the word nuclear. Yeah, he couldn't say <laughs> I mean, Trump's nuclear. got, his, he says the best words and stuff like that. He yeah. has words. Right. Um, I it's terrifying. Just... It's yeah. terrifying to see what is um, steering the ship right now. And... That's what's really – it's driving a lot of people to create, uh, and I'm very excited. This is going to be a really hard four years. Don't get yourself – you know. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, can, I can stop you right there. Uh, it's not going to be hard four years. 
You don't because, think we're going to have a hard time? Oh, no. I think uh, in six months from now, six to six months to a year from now, he'll be impeached. So it's not a problem. Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen. Honestly, I I hear that. Uh, I know with the, the Russia investigation, it takes years for you for to gather evidence to impeach someone, and then it takes that, years that, to impeach that someone. Aside, that aside, that whole Russia thing, no. See, he's going to embarrass the, the country enough to where they're just going to say, dude, you're gone. Oh, you think we're just going to be like, let's just get it out of here. Some people do not want to impeach the impeach the trump because of the pence trump. they don't want pence to be uh in the front lines let's be honest i mean which is worse <laughs> i don't know honestly <laughs> sarah that's my honest answer i yeah. don't know um he calls his wife mother i mean that makes me feel very uncomfortable <laughs> My grandfather used to call his his wife mother. So I mean, it just it was just an old fashioned thing, you know. But he was from Texas, so it, yeah. I mean, just... that, all, all fashions all well and good, but uh, I live in the year twenty seventeen. Yeah. Uh, and, just, and with everything else that's happening with the administration, as a woman, I feel very uncomfortable. Uh, I, a lot I of girls feel it. that way. Yeah, from from a woman's point of view, there's a there's a lot of stuff to be fearful of, you know. I mean, The Handmaid's Tale is really freaking me out. <laughs> uh, I said in, in the last uh, podcast that the sperm count in the Western world is dropping. And then, you know, you you watch shows like <clears throat> Hulu's Handmaid's Tale. You're like, oh, maybe this is where we're headed. So probably not. But And, and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, she is taken. So. Yeah, I am taken. <laughs> you can't. I I can't be a surrogate for your religious child this yeah. time. She she does have a boyfriend, unfortunately, you know. But hey, <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's uh, it shouldn't be unfortunate that I I'm in a loving and committed no, relationship, no. and he treats me very good. So everybody should be very happy that's, for that. That's 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 the that's a very good thing. I just you know. No, it's fine. Uh, it, it's and um, we collaborate too. So he makes scary things. So we right. He's a he's a special effects uh, artist. Yeah, he's very talented. He turns me into monsters sometimes. Uh, and we, I'm working with him with the Mesomorta script and mapping out the character, uh, talking about how to come up because at one point she has USB ports in her neck as opposed to like the bolts. The balls. So we're we're trying to figure out ways to make the USB ports so that they're good, so I can get them plugged in. You know, the little tiny things of pre-production that you have to figure out. We got to make some fake intestines at some point because we're gonna need those. But uh, I'm going to be raising money on GoFundMe for a budget because uh, I believe in paying people a living wage for giving me their time and talent, and I think that right. everyone should do that. Some filmmaking, some, I mean, I understand independent filmmaking isn't glamorous and it's tough, but uh, the decency of paying people for their time is overlooked by a lot of filmmakers, especially independent filmmakers. And uh, I feel it's really important. And I also feel like it's very important to hire women. So I'm hoping to have a lot of girls on my set. It's going to be a, a taco fest. Women. Yeah. They're, um, <laughs> <laughs> Women on set, like, That's give me a taco fast. <laughs> oh. I, don't, I won't just hire women, though. I'm not going to be like that. But uh, I, I do feel like girls uh, are, are very, uh, they, they bring a great energy to set. They're very ambitious. They're very driven. They're very maternal. And I feel like there need to be more women on set as opposed to less. There's only about 13% uh, of uh, the Hollywood movie industry is women. It's very, very low, and there needs to be what? more. Yeah, it can't be that low. It's a sausage fest right now. It needs to be a taco fest, taco party. Then who are all these females that I find attractive? <laughs> They're actors. <laughs> I mean, we're talking uh, with uh, directors. There are a lot of female producers, but we need uh, people, this, more female writers, more female directors showing 
this really is the time. I mean, honestly, it's like I, I'm not trying to get on a soapbox or anything, but this right now is the time of the female when it comes to horror and women, because mm-hmm. there are quite a few of them out there right now that are that are not just writing, but they're they're writing, directing, they're producing. That you know, I mean, we've had a few of them on our it's show. What we have to do in order to tell the stories that we want to tell. But uh, it's great because yeah. it, we we get these. The, have you seen Have you seen Jessica Cameron's Truth or Dare? I haven't yet. And is that on Amazon? It's. Or? I'm not sure what platform it's on, but I know it's out. It, it, it's out to buy if you want to buy. Okay. It. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, but her Jessica Sonneborn, I mean, uh, just a hand a handful, and, and they're coming up with these rich, creepy, great horror films. So I'm all for the the women doing the writing and the directing. Yeah, women are very susceptible to mental illness, so that means we can write really fucked up stuff, guys. Come on. <laughs> I'm really, really like uh, focusing on horror comedy. Uh, I I think that the two I've always said the two are like cousins. They're family. They get along really well, and I don't see enough women doing the funny horror stuff and uh some people it's a great time to be a woman in comedy and it's a great time to be a woman in in horror so uh i'm really hoping that with this podcast and my web series uh if it gets funded that i can show people what i'm made of because i'm really tired of waiting for my turn and i'm ready to step up you shouldn't have to wait for your turn you should just have to walk up there and take it you know it's tough as a lady, I'm telling you, it's tough. You, I tell people, I would tell people I want to be a writer, director, producer, and they would roll their eyes at me in my early 20s because women. Why? I, mean, I don't know. I couldn't tell why? you. There's why just why can't people just get behind it? I mean, we're, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for women. I know. I mean, Preach it, man. I mean, I feel like some people are. Uh, worried or afraid of losing their status in the industry and their power in the industry. And guys are just so used to it at this point. Um, They see a girl and they think, Oh, you're going to be wardrobe department or, Oh, you're probably going to want to do craft services or, Oh, you're going to be a producer. And those aren't bad jobs, but uh, it's very hard for a guy to look at a girl and think, Oh, she wants to be a director. Oh, she wants to be a a director of photography or stuff like that. Um, It's tough. And, it's very hard to convey how frustrating it is for women, especially in this industry uh, without, I mean, right now it, it's a good time to be a woman, but we're still struggling. We're still trying to find our voice. We're still trying to get the funding and recognition that we need. There are so many great female filmmakers, but you don't see a lot of them get uh, recognized for Oscars and things like that. Unless you're Patty Bigelow. Yeah. Or at Coppola. Yeah. Well, you know the, the the one that the one that might get a, a Patty Jenkins for Wonder Woman. Yeah, that was a really great uh, movie. Um, from the, I, I mean, I was very happy. I was tearing up from the opening credits to the end because it's a movie that's directed by a, an action movie that's directed by a woman starring a woman. Um, and a and, strong woman at that. Yeah. I mean, it's 2017. I would have liked this to come out in, you know, 20, oh, 1997. I would like something like that to have happened back then. But I guess yeah. better late than never. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it happens when it happens. I mean, uh, uh, back in the 80s, they were they were knocking a horror left and right because they said it was demeaning to women. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, all it did is turn women into the giant, giant uh, cases of meat. You know, and uh, just something to put up there for for guys to drool over. But they, what they don't tell you is that uh, the three Slumber Party Massacre films were all written and directed by women. Mm-hmm. You know, they, these are the ones that were put out by Corman. And Corman's whole idea was, hey, you know, give them what they want. Blood, boobs, you know, whatever. And it, it's like, but the women that are the women that are writing these movies and directing these movies are are women so they're the ones saying give us the blood yeah. the boobs and whatever you know i mean at that point with with stuff like that and i don't think people understand is like boobs are a trope in horror at this point like 
If if you see a horror movie that's gory and rated R and you don't see a pair of tits, like that's an oddity. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, as long as I mean, and every girl's going to get killed and guys are going to get killed in movies. I just yeah. we need more women to write better death scenes for guys. Right. Now, I'm all for it. I, yeah. I I I I'm all for it. I I got nothing against the. I, I think honestly, I do. I said it before. I said we need more women doing this stuff. I, we really do. I. I mean, every every guy can come up with like a thousand ways to to write a horror movie, and you know mm-hmm. whether it's a slasher or or a werewolf film or whatever, and they can come up with a thousand ways to 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 come up with the different transformations, but. You know, yeah. Let, let's see a woman. I mean, honestly, let's see a woman do it because they're going to come at it from a whole different perspective, especially when it's like a with horror a transformation women, scene. Yeah, women are afraid of like different things. I think. I mean, The Babadook is a great film, and it's about Babadook depression. It's about depression and grief and I, things. I like saw that. that for the first time this year. Oh yeah, you liked it? Yeah, I really it, liked it. It's really yeah. it's great and it's not just scary it's it's a tragic movie and it it's about so much more than just that one monster and, and the babadook is gay by the annoying. way yeah he was no did you hear Bobby... that the babadook is gay no i haven't heard this <laughs> um f- uh netflix accidentally categorized the babadook in the lgbt category so the internet has made Baba, the Babadook like an LGBT symbol now, which makes me so happy. <laughs> wow. Man, Netflix it takes messed all, up. And now... It takes all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's gay and he's proud. You wouldn't know it. He's black and white. <laughs> hey, gay people are black, gay people are white. Yeah. I saw about the color of the picture. Yeah. You know? he's, he's not wearing the... The, but look it up. Look it, up um, LGBT, the Babadook, that's, and you'll you'll funny. find some funny memes. They're really good. I recommend that to you. I, I will check it out. So where can, uh, I mean, I should probably wrap this up. Leo's okay. got to go on vacation. Yeah, Leo. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what people don't know is that, I mean, when, when, when I do this, they don't see him. It's just you and I, so, yeah. you know. But uh, but it's in the it's in the credits of every sit down I do. This is recorded and engineered by Leo Pond. Because he's the so, best. Yeah. So if people are looking for you, where can they find you? Yeah, you could find uh, the trailer for Apocalypse Now is up. So if you'd like to listen to it <laughs> and subscribe, uh, Google Apocalypse Now with the question mark. Go to bitcomedy.co. We don't have the M. We don't need it. And uh, subscribe. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, everything. Uh, and new episodes start September 5th. Right on. Yeah, uh, that needs to be my ringtone when you apocalypse say apocalypse. Now? <laughs> apocalypse now? You know, just constantly, you know? Yeah. So so I want to thank Joanne, Pinco- Joanne Van Dyne. It's going to be tough. For, you got to get used to it. I, I got to get used to saying it, yeah, but... Um, like I said, I love the name, but, uh, I want to thank you for coming by, sit down again. You are always welcome. You're a wonderful person to have on. I love talking to you. I'll definitely be Uh, back. For, for Joanna, I'm the 13th Wolfman. Of course, I'm on the prowl.